After the dramatic crash of the weekend, Bitcoin is slowly finding its feet. Ethereum has back up 10% in the last 24 hours. Binance, XRP, all up. The top 10 looking pretty good. Apart from Dogecoin, which had a very sad Doge day, didn't really go to plan. So let's unpack all of this and more in this episode of Crypto News. Hey guys, what's up? It's Greg here from Personal Evolution. Today, coming at you with another market review and crypto news. As always, it's not financial advice. Please don't take anything as buy or sell calls. This is not that sort of channel. I'm just giving an impartial view as to what's happening. So without further ado, let's jump into this market. Here we are, Bitcoin back up. After a bit of a uh, worrying downturn, I think it was something like 19%. Is this trend going to continue? So Bitcoin bears have a 340 million lead heading into Friday's options expiries. So options are a prediction of future price. Basically, Cointelegraph here saying that it's making a slow recovery after facing a 16% correction. We've covered why that was. So apparently there was some massive deposit at Binance, which I had heard of. I did cover the hash rate dropping due to a blackout in China. Regardless, options were in the favor of the bears and that's that's us coming into Friday. Regardless of the crash, what the story is saying is the initial outlook is balanced. So we have a pretty even distribution of bullish options and bearish options. However, going into Friday, is neutral to bearish uh, sentiment that dominates with 70% of the remaining Bitcoin contracts that are open. I don't, well, it's going to, what this means is it's going to suppress the price of Bitcoin unless we have any major news coming out in the next few days going into Friday. In the introduction, I said it could be a hump day. What does that mean? It could look a bit like something, well, like what we're seeing in Bitcoin. So it goes up and comes down towards the end of the week, but we could see that over a long, longer time period. In terms of what that's done to the total uh, market cap, Let's have a quick look on the Fibonacci retracements and see where we are up to. See, yeah, so we're, we're, we're hovering around this 2.618 Fib extension from the previous high to low. So I think we can expect to see the price hover around here. If we do start making a break to the downside, then this is mostly going to be led with Bitcoin. We could see it bounce off this 1.618 Fib extension. So that would be the next target for me. So in terms of altcoins, let's have a quick look. From the previous high to the low, we are hovering, we're finding that support. We didn't even get near it the other day sort of thing. So we still got a bit of a, a wiggle room to find that other support. A fair amount of total market cap, about 200, 200 billion or so to get down to the 748 level. We could be in for a sharp correction or hopefully we see this March high and break through this 1.18. 9 trillion market cap. In terms of dominance, as always, the story is still the same in uh, this the, coming to the end of Bitcoin's bull run, the Bitcoin dominance is falling still. And that is always good news for us all coin investors because we want to see that really go below 50%. And that's really when we know all season is well underway. So in terms of the wider market, what's going on? As you can see, all the all coins are up with the exception of Dogecoin, which had a pretty disappointing day. Let's jump into, jump into Ethereum first. So three Ether ETFs begin trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange. This is just great news for Ethereum. It may not affect the price directly, but it's definitely an indirect price mover because it just shows confidence in the Ethereum project. In terms of the Ethereum price, let's take a look at these FIB extensions. We're hovering around the 0.618 mark at the moment. So I am expecting to see this much higher after maybe bouncing off the 0.5 range. Yeah, and I tend to be quite bullish at this point because we've had this kind of full push back up full and then it's pushed through the upwards resistance. Doge, as I mentioned, had a bit of a rough day. We had a price dip of 20%. Yeah, the jokes coins are even better hitting the $1 mark on 420 or 69, but it didn't happen. Again, in terms of what that looks like using the fibs, we've got a nice level of support coming in at 0.382 after the previous high. So it seems to bounce off there and we'll be, it'll be interesting to see if we can break out or if we fall lower from here. Doge has had a enormous run up and it, the price is very high at the moment. Personally, I'm expecting to see this break to the downside, but you can never tell with crypto. Other things floating around in the news, Uniswap records a record 10 billion in weekly trading volume. However, it's still not the biggest DEX because PancakeSwap tallied 4 billion in volume in the last 24 hours alone compared to Uniswap's 1.8 billion. So I think what we're seeing here is if Ethereum's gas fees are really starting to have an effect 
and people are moving over to PancakeSwap and that. The good news for Uniswap is it's deployed V3 contracts to four Ethereum test nets and this is really what we've all been waiting for we need to see these gas fees come down and i think this is a step towards it we're gonna we're gonna see some good improvements to the uniswap platform but we need to see more stuff from the ethereum side before this really flies in terms of uniswap let's take a look at the fib retracement i know we're using them like crazy today just to see what kind of support we have so it seems like we're hovering around this 0.382 fib ex extension and yeah, I can expect it to go back down as it seems to have broken out. Or we're sitting on top of this nice rally that we had last time and near to the peak. So yeah, I expect to see more resistance around here. It'll be interesting to see whether this goes up or down. As always, I don't really know. But the only thing I do know is it's going to go somewhere. Moving on to XRP, our favorite coin we love to hate. We had a report come out by let me find it, CoinShares Weekly Digital Asset Fund, and they noted that nearly 33 million flowed into xrp product this week so there is bullish demand for institutional investors for xrp this is massive news it's something that i personally have been waiting for a long time to see this confidence back from institutional investors if i don't if you weren't around for the last uh, bull run the institutional story the messaging around that was the biggest reason that it uh, that XRP went to the moon because it gave confidence in the retail market that they were going to do great things. They got slammed with the SEC lawsuit, which has obviously put a hold on a lot of institutional stuff. So to see this come back, I think it's super bullish. In terms of what XRP is doing, however, I think we could see a bit more of a sell-off before we go higher. We've had this downtrend after the, over the last few days with the big sell-off on the 18th along with the rest of the market. And since then, it's struggled to find its way back up. We seem to be ranging between this 1.16 and the 1.47 range. We're hitting the bottom, coming back up, hitting out again, coming back up. And now we're hovering around the $1.35 mark. So again, until altcoin season really gets underway, I'd expect to see this to keep going sideways a bit longer. We were, if you haven't watched in BC back, I was talking about Wyckoff accumulation, but I don't. It doesn't, to me, this pattern doesn't seem to have happened. And I'll be interested to see his update video later today, whether he still stands by that. Because to me, we're not seeing that. And I'll link to that video below. Final bits of news of this week, regulation. And I don't go on Bitcoin.com a lot, but these three caught my eye. So Morgan Stanley says central bank digital currency is not a threat to cryptocurrencies. So again, a big tick from um, big banks. In addition, we've got the Federal Reserve Bank says that Bitcoin is clearly a state of value. Again, all points to good news for regulation. And finally, we had China, which this came out a few days ago, but it calls Bitcoins and stablecoins investment asset alternatives for the first time since their crackdown. So I think it's interesting to see the change in narrative that we're seeing from these kind of big uh, institutions and stuff. And that, I believe, is in preparation for, hopefully, a massive bull run because it's all building that narrative around how safe it is, get retail investors in. What they, what actually trans, this translates to is the institutional guys are already in. And it's just funny how these things work out because somehow after the institutional guys are in, oh, boom, price goes up and they all sell out a massive profit, leaving the retail investors holding the bags. So... I'll be careful around this. I am watching it very closely to see if more regulatory stuff is is coming out. We have the XRP, the XRP, sorry, not the XRP, the Ripple lawsuit. We have the Ripple lawsuit ongoing and that should provide some clarity because we just got the motion to uh, join, intervene from the from John Deaton into the phrase. So that would be really good to see what Judge Torres says on that. And if you want more information on the XRP stuff, suggest you watch Jeremy Hogan and I'll link to his video below. And yeah, that's really it. Looking ahead, I pointed this out before, we've got the 15th BNB burn. I still haven't seen too much about that, but hopefully we'll get more information soon. Other popular stuff, if you look at trending on here, we've got a NFT app launch. I haven't looked into it at all, so yep, be interested to see. Theta call my eye, mainnet 3.0 gets launched. We have quite a few things actually coming up for Theta if I jump onto their uh, coin. We've got quite a few things coming up for theta in the next say quarter of activity and so i'm expecting to see big things from them 
as we go into this bull cycle. To be honest, Theta was really the biggest thing that I saw that was coming up apart from the BNB listing. So I shall leave it there for today. Hope that gets you up to date with all your latest crypto news. Give us a subscribe. I will be bringing out more white paper content and more fundamental analysis soon. And like I say, subscribe if you want to be the first to get that and hit the bell if you really want to be the first. And yeah, until the next one, stay safe and yeah, keep buying the dip.